There was nothing left of us after the war. We were magnificent once. For a million years we lived in peace and prosperity, and even the greatest species envied us. Our technology, our society, our culture. That was what it meant to be Rakheti. Generation after generation that never knew pain or fear or loss. We inscribed our sigil on everything we exported to the rest of the galaxy. Our likeness, the mark of excellence, a long, sinuous body with two tails, an elongated head with a manipulator appendage on either side. We thought that as the sigil testified to the quality of the product, so the reverse would be true, and our works would breed respect for us in those we traded with. Instead, it bred jealousy and greed. We did not expect it, and we made no preparations, so when the war came, we were defenseless. An alliance of species, Jomon, Tsil, Togathian, swept through our systems like wildfire through a forest. Our homeworld was leveled down to the bedrock. A million years of glorious history, wiped clean from the memory of time, and all we could do was watch in horror or simply look away. Most of our colonies were obliterated too, only a few of the smaller ones bypassed by the invasion fleets, and those were swallowed by our enemies when they finally stopped to divide the spoils. All that was ours became theirs. Finally the guns fell silent, and when they did, we opened our eyes to find that there was nothing left of us. Not in any way that mattered, at least. Our civilization and all its wonders was gone, reduced to a footnote in some other species' archive. There were a handful of Rakheti survivors who took the last remaining ships and fled. But we were a ragtag flotilla, itinerant traders eking out a living by selling the last pieces of our lives to whoever would buy them. With the sigil carefully expunged, of course. Because it was safer, and because we were nobody now. Which was fitting because we were friends with nobody, too. All the species we'd enjoyed good relations with, even those we'd considered friends for eons, refused to take us in, fearing our enemies would punish them for it. We were not the only species that had grown decadent and complacent, so we were forced to become nomadic, drifting from star to star, taking a moment's respite wherever we could before we were forced to move on again. In this way, we meandered ever further across the galaxy until we came to a shining blue jewel of the world on the fringes of a distant spiral arm. The natives had a thousand names for it, but after arguing amongst themselves for a while, they settled on one we should use, Earth. And to our surprise, they welcomed us. We had precious little to give them, just leftover scraps and memories of better times. But they let us stay nonetheless for motives we couldn't fathom. We thought that finally we had come far enough that our enemies would leave us alone and that we might have found a new place we could call home. The natives of Earth, those awkward, ungainly humans, were a primitive species. They had barely set foot outside their own solar system, and there were still large numbers of them living more or less as they had before they even left their own planet. Before our downfall, we would have pitied them, but we were in no position to pity anyone now, except ourselves. Compared to our rapidly decaying ships, Earth was an oasis of civilization. However, that didn't mean there couldn't be improvements. The humans took the paltry gifts we offered, and in return gave us a part of their oceans and a few islands sufficient to our needs. There were few enough of us left, and they are a land-dwelling species anyway. It seemed they didn't expect anything from us and intended just to leave us to our own devices. But we intended to repay our hosts and if we didn't have the material possessions to do so any more than we at least had knowledge. Humans and Rakheti prospered together. They were eager to learn and we were eager to teach. They lacked the countless millennia of experience we had to draw on, but they had ingenuity and determination. After a few decades, humans were, if not as advanced as most species, then at least not completely backwards anymore. It was a startlingly rapid transformation the humans surprising us over and over again as they took technical concepts that were far above them and reshaped them into things they could actually use. It wasn't long before we started running out of things to teach them. Then the good times came to an end once again. They couldn't let us rest, even so far away, even so far reduced. All we wanted was to live in peace, but they feared that we would rebuild and return for what had once been ours. An embassy arrived from our old enemies, the Jomon. The message they conveyed was simple. Hand over the Rakheti you have unwisely sheltered, or be annihilated with them. 
In our heart of hearts, we had always known this day might come, and we had kept our ship spaceworthy, just in case. With sorrow, we made ready to depart. Then the humans surprised us one more time. They said, no. I have heard that the Jomon ambassador asked three times if there had been some kind of translation error. Finally, one of the human negotiators clarified their response in unmistakable terms. You come to our planet hunting refugees who are no danger to you. You threaten us in our own home, you demand that we betray our friends, and you expect us to cower before you. Our answer is no. We will do none of that. The Joman ambassador was, understandably, perplexed. He reminded them again that the Jalmon had many more warships than humans. This did not have the desired effect. The humans simply told the ambassador that if he wished that to continue, then his people should keep them far away from Earth. Retaliation was slow in coming. Earth was well beyond the fringes of civilized space, and the Jomon had brought only a token force to back up their threat. It was assumed the mere existence of their great fleets would be enough to ensure compliance, and when that failed, it took a long time to gather the necessary forces and cover the great distances. But come it did. The grand fleet of the Triple Alliance, Jaumon, Ciel, Togathian ships, just as it had been at the end of our world. However, the Jomon ambassador had failed to consider a small yet crucial difference in the psychology of humans. Most species, when faced with a threat, will estimate the cost of fighting, compare it to the cost of complying with their enemy's demands, and choose the lesser evil. Humans, however, will estimate the maximum amount of force they can bring to bear, estimate the maximum amount of force the enemy can field, and keep fighting no matter what the cost so long as the former is greater, equal, or even just not too much smaller than the latter. In other words, they are prepared to make sacrifices just so long as there's even a remote possibility of victory. Other species aren't like that. After you reach a certain level of civilization, making sacrifices no longer seems worth it. But humans are new to civilization, as we understand the word. Their lives are built on sacrifices, which is not to say they don't care. They care all right. But unfortunately for the Triple Alliance, killing them doesn't make them back down. It just makes them angrier. The first fleet engagements took place near Cygnus. Earth ships ambushed a forward element of the Alliance fleet and scored a few kills before reinforcements showed up. The Earth fleet then fought a pitched battle against an allied attack squadron. The humans took 90% casualties. It was a complete rout with all human ships forced out of Cygnus. Several colonies were evacuated as well, just before being destroyed. After the battle, the Ciel sent an embassy to Earth to negotiate terms of surrender. The humans were confused. We've only had one battle, they said. Who ends a war after just one battle? Most people, actually, but I didn't tell them that. The Ciel assumed that humanity had simply doubted the capabilities of their fleet and that now they had comprehensively demonstrated their superiority, humans would back down to avoid further losses. That is how most species would respond. The Ciel were disappointed, however, because as I said, being humans, they just got angrier. Remember, Cygnus was a rallying cry for the rest of the war, an insane statement to most species because why would you want to remember your defeat? But for humans, it worked. It was a long war, much longer than the Triple Alliance had expected. Their first forays towards Earth ran into systems bristling with fixed defenses. Their fleets were stronger, but thanks to their overconfidence, humanity had had a long time to prepare. System by system, they were whittled down, so they tried to strike directly at Earth. That was an even worse idea. Earth was the most heavily defended planet of them all, and even the combined might of the Alliance fleet was forced to pull back after some inconclusive skirmishes. Then, they switched tactics, attacking the least defended systems in order to draw the humans into another pitched battle they would likely lose. The humans didn't fall for the bait, and instead let their colonies fall while launching hit-and-run attacks, nipping at large forces to disorganize them, ambushing smaller ones and destroying them. I say humans. The humans were not completely alone. I and some of the other Reketi fought with them. For the first time, mostly, our attempts to defend our own homes had been completely futile, and most of those who had tried to fight rather than run had died. We were new to the art of war, but we had good teachers. Now our roles were reversed. 
It was humans who had a vast amount of experience in something they could impart to us. It was not knowledge we had ever wanted, but we made use of it as best we could. The Triple Alliance began to falter. They were at the end of a galaxy-spanning supply chain, and the war of attrition was not working in their favor. The casualty rates might have been horrific for the humans, but they were also well above what the Yoman, the Seal, or the Togathians had expected. And they were not used to making sacrifices. The Togathian contingent consolidated their forces to guard against further attacks, limiting their effectiveness and angering their allies. The carnage continued, but it was becoming clear that the situation was at best a stalemate. The humans might even be winning. And that was enough to seal the fate of the Alliance. Because humans are not without their friends as well. Apart from us, I mean. They enjoyed good relations with all the other species in this corner of the galaxy and had been lobbying them to enter the war on their side. Faced with the juggernaut of the Alliance fleet, all the neighboring species declined to send aid. Because like most spacefaring species, they were rational beings. As we Raketi understand the term, at least, but once that juggernaut started showing cracks, the war had caused immense disruption to trade in this part of the galaxy, and many other species had noted the brutality with which the Alliance had wiped out human colonies. Humanity's neighbors assessed the situation rationally and judged that it would be to their benefit if the Alliance was encouraged, emphatically, to return to their side of the galaxy and stay there. When the odds were right, the probing attacks on Alliance detachments began. Then, an Alliance logistics squadron was cornered and defeated in a battle that cost the attackers almost nothing and the defenders almost everything. As soon as that happened, the Tagathian fleet withdrew entirely. Then the Tsiel, or what was left of them, and finally the remnants of the Jomon. Their whole war effort collapsed so quickly it was almost an anti-climax, and the humans barely had time to hunt down a rearguard squadron and have the final showdown they'd been waiting for. The apocalyptic battle shattered the enemy forces for good. Just as we had decades before, the battered ships of the Triple Alliance limped across the far reaches of the galaxy, trying to get to safety. They made it home. However, their homes were surrounded by species they had threatened and bullied when their mighty fleet was unchallengeable. The humans had warned them, if you want to keep your ships, don't bring them anywhere near Earth. They really should have listened. Victory was bittersweet with so many dead, but having never experienced it before, I could see why humans enjoyed the taste. It was certainly better than defeat. And to my surprise, the war was over, and this time there was something left. Our home as we had come to call it, Earth. That should be the end of my tale, but after the war, I asked a human, why? Why did they go through all this for us? Because it always seemed like insanity to me. He told me, first of all, because you're our guests and our friends, and we owed you better than to just hand you over, but also because you don't deal with bullies by giving them what they want. Then they'll just ask for more and more until by the time you have to fight, you've got nothing left to fight with. That lesson's been learned the hard way more than once in our history. I sat there listening, and my mind spun as I realized I was only just now starting to understand the young species that I had comfortably looked down on since they first gave us sanctuary. So mark my words well. There is logic in their madness. They are less than sane, but more than savage. And while they balance in between, there is more within their reach than for those on either side. Do not underestimate them because we are old and they are young. We have a million years of greatness behind us, but it may well be that they have a million years of greatness to yet come.